I think my main, because I'm, I'm thinking we're doing this frame generation talk, FSR 3, DLSS 3. I know I alluded to it and probably did almost spell it out at the start, but I think my main issue with these technologies is you know, how they're presented. Obviously, we've talked about the performance thing and all that. If they were pitched as like FSR 3 you know, frame smoothing or DLSS frame smoothing technology, I'd be much more on board with it. So I think my, my hang up is more the naming of the technology and, and, and what it's been presented to gamers to do. Uh, for me, it's almost like a really intelligent, uh, I won't say AI based, but like intelligent, uh, complex version of like doing what blurring does in games. Is that? It's like a reverse motion blur, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It theoretically, on a high refresh rate display with really good frame interpolation, you would get a clearer experience. You see more like text in motion and stuff would be clearer for you. Yes. So it is kind of like a reverse motion blur. Yeah. And so to be um, clear, when people say that I'm saying it's it's a blurring technology, I'm not saying that. I'm saying it it it, it essentially fills the role that blur was crudely doing, which was yes. to to remove that. Uh, what would you call it? like laggy sort like of judder. jagged, ju- like yeah, jarring, juddery slideshow. Sort yeah, of thing. yeah. So blur was introduced to make it a bit more you know, smooth, smoother motion, uh, but it sucks, and most people turn it off, and I certainly do. So it's it's almost like yeah, I don't want to say blur, but it's like it's it's filling that mm-hmm. requirement. Yeah. <laughs> if you know what I mean, uh, and, and I, I think that's what it does. I think I really do think that's what it does. Is it's a blur replacement. It's it's it takes it to the next level and actually does it pretty well. Yeah, I agree, and I think it's sort of the same argument that we had back with again, like ray tracing for the RTX twenty series. The issue with that was that it was presented as a feature that you must have right now <laughs> and that you must spend money on, and yeah. the you know the justification for not getting a performance, uh, you know, cost per frame improvement for the RTX twenty series was you were getting features like ray tracing. Whereas if NVIDIA had come out and said that ray tracing was a technology demo, a look into the future of graphics rendering, and our graphics cards are the only place that you can assess this tech demo for yourself, the only place where you get this glimpse into the future, that significantly changes the discussion around Mm. that feature. Mm -hmm. Because now it's a much more realistic take on what the technology is offering to gamers, and people would be much more receptive to it. It would... I think the criticism of ray tracing at the start would have been, it probably still would have been there, but it would have been a lot more muted, I guess, by the fact that NVIDIA is just sort of saying, well, this is a tech demo. Like we're not expecting mm-hmm. this to run super well right now. You're not buying a graphics card for this experience. You're still buying a GPU for the overall general rasterization experience, but you can sort of take a look at that. Now, of course, they didn't do that, which is why they had all these problems. I think to some degree, they've learned that lesson with things like path tracing are more being described along the lines of a tech demo or look into the future than Mm -hmm. a must have, you must buy a 4090 for path tracing sort of thing. So I think that's Mm -hmm. improved. Mm -hmm. But yeah, things like frame generation could certainly be advertised in a way that's more reflective of what it does. And I think that that would, yeah, I guess that would improve the situation. But again, like the incentive for them to show higher FPS numbers on bar charts is far too great. Like the, it is. the fact that it this is, yeah. just turns up the FPS numbers and even something like FSR 3, like which doesn't work with VSync off, like it just does not show the frames correctly paced like the graph is sort of showing you. Like, yeah, you turn on FSR 3, your FPS number goes from 60 FPS to 110 FPS or something. But with VSync off, you're not actually really seeing those frames it's kind of even like a next level version of that where <laughs> they've kind of just made a technology in that scenario that literally all it does is make the FPS number larger without any benefit. Mm-hmm. So the incentive there for, for AMD to sort of say, well, you know, this makes the FPS numbers larger and NVIDIA is the same with frame generation. It's They're never going to escape that. Like it's a marketing person is always going to jump all over that. And obviously yeah. the, the explanation that we're sort of saying in this podcast is much more along the lines of something that wouldn't really sell the, the feature very well. It wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, it certainly wouldn't be an incentive to buy an RTX 40 series card like frame generation is at the moment. So mm-hmm. one of the things I wanted to talk about as well with frame generation, <clears throat> which I think applies to FSR 3 and a DLSS 3, is sort of maybe it's more relevant for FSR 3 because AMD came out and, and when just talking to me about like the variable refresh rate issues and things by saying, 
Well, the goal of FSR3 is to max out your monitor's refresh rate. This is how it sort of is designed to work. It works the best in that scenario. That's what we found. You're running at the max refresh of your monitor with vSyncon tends to work pretty well. But the issue with this and why it's probably not ready for prime time if that's the goal is that unless you start your frame rate at pretty much exactly half of your maximum refresh rate, turning on frame generation will actually increase latency. So what we've seen previously, of course, is that you know frame generation doesn't improve latency. Typically, you would get the same latency. Like if you had a 144 hertz monitor, you go from 60 to 120 FPS, your latency won't improve. But if you start at 100 FPS, you max out your monitor to 144 FPS with frame generation, frame generation has to generate every second frame, which means your actual render frame rate has now been reduced. So in that 100 to 144 FPS example, theoretically, your frame rate has had to go down to something around 75 to 80 FPS, whereas previously it was rendering natively at 100 FPS. With that sort of target of let's max out your monitor, for a lot of gamers, the the experience there is probably not going to be super compelling. I, I think that's... I guess a a problem, like a pretty serious problem with the way that frame generation works now. And the if NVIDIA and AMD are sort of targeting this, let's max out your monitor situation, they can't just be like reducing the native render rate for people because it's not gonna be it's like it's that's not a great experience for people to just suddenly reduce the number of real frames that you're getting. It's just not hmm. 